Hey, this is Andrew Brown. In this video, I want, I want to take a quick look here at Pinecone. So Pinecone is a uh, vector database um, that we can utilize uh, to use in reg systems or just if we need a vector store. The reason I want to look at Pinecone is that it's just so easy to use. Um, and it feels like a, a, a like a serverless or cloud native first kind of product. Um, and so I figured, you know, we might as well look at a one uh, vector uh, store that is third party. And so why not go look at Pinecone? I am very familiar with MongoDB and it's also really great as well, but I'll save that for another time. Let's go ahead and log in here. So I previously logged in here. I haven't done much uh, with it previously, but I, you know, this is our opportunity to do something here. So um, let's go ahead and get set up here in Jupyter Lab. So I'm going to go ahead into Jupyter Lab. We don't really need Jupyter Lab for this. We're going to do it anyway. And we're going to say Pinecone. And we'll set up a new space. This will launch a MLT3 medium. If you're concerned about cost, do not launch. Just watch. Or you could use your local uh, machine as a Pinecone can work locally pretty well. But we are going to go through their welcome project and see how productive we can get. They have APIs for other things other than just um, Python. So it has Ruby, JavaScript, a lot of support. Um, but the thing that I think is really cool about uh, Pinecone is the, the level of integrations they have. So if we go over to Pinecone and we look at their integrations, we'll go over to here, and they just got plenties, uh, plenties and plenties of integrations, right? So, you know, whatever we're thinking of doing, um, you know, it should be pretty easy. This one, again, um, I'm not sure exactly what we're going here, but it seems like this would be you provisioning it within your AWS account. We can take a look here. That's not exactly what I want to do. I just want to use the, the managed one that's on their platform. But it seems like, yeah, here you could mm, launch it. But this is pay as you go. So it's 0 0.01 cents per unit. It's not exactly saying for the integration. Now, we, we can integrate this into, into the knowledge base. So I, I imagine that the way it would work is that we would use the knowledge base. But again, I just wanted to generically use Pinecone to get you some experience uh, with it. So uh, let's go back over to here. And again, we're just waiting for this environment to spin up. So I'm just going to pause until it's ready, OK? All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up Jupyter Lab. And let's just see how far we can get with uh, Pinecone's instruction. And you know, while that is launching, I, you know, I can just go over and just quickly show you where that integration is in AWS. We do see it in other videos, but I might as well just go and quickly show you as that environment is loading. But yeah, over in Amazon Bedrock, if we were to go here and then on the left-hand side, we went down to uh, Knowledge Bases. If we were to create one, we could choose Pinecone. It should be in here, maybe on the next step. Um, so hit Next. And I just need to choose anything. I'm not actually going to store data in here. But uh, yeah, I'll just grab this. I don't. Their interface is just terrible. We'll say Next. And yeah, I, uh, I'll go here. And so we'll go here and here we could choose something like Pinecone. OK, so this is where we could uh, integrate it. All right. But um, what I'm going to do. Vector engines for Amazon Vector Serverless Search. OK, that's just within um, Amazon. I thought that was a new offering. Well, let's go over to here and we'll make a new notebook. And this one is going to be called Pinecone. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say Pinecone here. And let's go ahead and see how far we can get here. So we'll do this and hit enter. That's going to install Pinecone. Then it says you need to initialize the client API. So this is my key. Of course, I'm going to clear it out. But, uh, you know, I'm placing it here right now. And, uh, you know, when I bring it over this notebook, I'll have to clear it out. Then here we, uh, we can create our first index. We have the dimension, which says eight replace with your model dimensions i'm not sure exactly what that means right now but we'll learn as we go and then we have our model metric which is cosine and then here we have the serverless spec so it says AWS us east one okay so that seems good and so we'll go ahead and hit enter and we'll give that a moment to run and so that is now running and so i'm thinking here that we're specifying where it is running so i'm curious about that one uh, so let's go over here and let's go over the docs and take take a quick look what information we have. Um, so if we go over to references. Mm -hmm. I want to know about this part. 
because I want to know where else we can set this provider. So if we go to database API, data plane, control plane, where is this? Mm hmm. So we'll go here, we'll go here. And so what I'm looking for here is that serverless spec information. Not easy to find. Where are you? Mm. <laughs> so it's not making it clear, but you know, what I'm thinking is that we are able to swap that out, like maybe if it's Azure or, or GCP. And so they're provisioning it, provisioning this in your location. There's another service that kind of works like this. It's called um, Moment, uh, Memento. So Memento is one where Memento, Memento, database, that's not it. Memento Go, here we go. And so Memento is a, a caching service. And when you spin this up, you say like, I want to cache this in AWS or wherever, but they're still the ones that are managing it, right? So here, you know, like you might be running your workload in USC one in AWS. And so you, you'll you want your um, your index to be created there. So anyway, um, supposedly we have now created our index. So like, let's see what we do next. So let's go ahead and uh, let's say, go on your path, building it. So we've created our index, we did that. So, oh, they have an example notebook. Let's open that up. Mm, what would be a fun one to do? Semantic search is pretty darn powerful. So let's take a look at this one. This is gonna open up in uh, CoLab. And so here we can see we are loading a data set. This one is using that in particular. We're using our API key. Serverless spec for our cloud region. This one's going to AWS as well. And this one here is, uh, it looks like it might use CUDA, but it's not. And so it's using something called all mini, this one. So let's take a look at this. I want to see what this is. So what is this model here? This is a sentence transformers model. It maps sentences and paragraphs to uh, 843 dimensional dense. So I've heard of sentence transformers. I believe um, over at Code here, whoever created this uh, has it over there. So sentence transformers is SBIRT. It's a go to Python module for accessing and, and using state of the art text and image embedding models. It can be used to compute embeddings and sentence transformers. So that might be something that we might want to utilize. So yeah, let's go ahead and utilize this. This seems actually seems like a great idea, but we'll have to kind of bring this stuff over. Um, so I'm going to bring this here and we'll just kind of map it over as we go. So we're clearly gonna want a little bit more. So we'll go back to the top here. Well, we'll go down here and we'll just continue on. And so we might not end up using, well, we can still use that index, but we might change this a bit here. And so as that's running, we'll wait. And so this part is going to, um, it says requires FOSS, which is not installed. So it seems like we have some compatibility issues here. What I'm going to try to do, and this might this might backfire on us, I'm just going to take out the version. Because what I wanted to do is try to pull the latest. And maybe that'll be less of an issue. Because this one here is optimized for Google Code Lab. And this might be a non-issue for us. The package contents are unknown. No record was found for, for uh, FS spec. Okay. Not sure what this is. Hmm, okay, so that might be fixed to a very, very specific version, but this one's just all about loading a data set. Let's go over to here and see load from data set. And so I'm thinking what this can do, if we go to our indexes. I mean, we've created our index, right? So we went here. This creates the index for quick start. This performs a search using cosine vector dimensional search. Now you're ready to upsert head to our documentation. Let's go to the quick start and maybe we can continue on there. Yeah, so we installed, you can see all the languages, initialize the client, we did that, create our index, that's something that we did. So yeah, maybe this is not gonna work out for us. It'd be cool to use sentence transformers as that is I think a, a really uh, easy way to um, start learning, but 
that will be for another time, I suppose. Okay, and so we'll just continue on here. So create your index, we did that. Uh, so within index vectors stored are namespaces, upsearch queries, and other data operations. Now you create your index, we're gonna do an upsert and we're gonna write to a six two dimensional vector two distinct uh, namespace. We go up here, this is dimensional two, but this one here is dimensional, I think the one we made was dimensional eight, right? Yeah, so that's not gonna really work for this example. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm just gonna make another new index. We'll just run it again. And we'll get rid of this one, the cell's not working for us, and we'll get rid of this. And we'll just continue on with this one. So that ran, and so now what I wanna do is we want to upsert some data. Okay, so here, yeah, we wanna describe the index, see that it's in a ready state, then we're gonna get the index, and then we're gonna insert some vector data. So we're not necessarily inserting uh, embeddings, we're just inserting vector data. Okay, Pinecone event is eventually consistent, so there can be a delay before you uh, have the updated uh, inserted data. So it's suggesting that we do this. We'll run this to make sure that it is there, okay. Run a similarity search, so query each namespace in your index for three vectors that are the most similar. We go ahead and hit run here. And so index query, example namespace, here are our vectors, give us the top three, uh, include values true. And this one here, we give different values. And so here it's matching. And our original one here was 1015. And so yeah, it's returning vectors that are most similar to those. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. Again, it's not a huge, huge deal if, if it doesn't. We're just trying to get any kind of experience, right? And so we'll go over to here and run this one. Okay, but really the way you'll probably end up using this is you'll be using embeddings, right? And then sending that data over there. So let's go back over to Pinecone, uh, Pinecone's UI, which it looks like, uh, oh, it's over here, okay. Go for assistant. So start building uh, accurate question answer capabilities in your AI product. So create an assistant. I think this is an isolate product, um, but it seems like this could be something that might have rag right off the bat. The service allows you to upload documents, ask questions and retrieve responses to your, yeah, so this is a rag. This is a rag. Um, and so, you know, project knowledge base, the one that ABUS has obviously does the exact same thing, but we can go ahead and utilize this. You know, I would have thought maybe we would see the visualization of our index here, but we do not, and that's totally fine. So let's go back over to here, and let's give this a try, because this seems kind of fun. So I'm gonna go over to here, and um, this one here, we create the assistant. Let's see if we go over the documentation and get a little bit more information before we run this. So create an assistant. but I wanna chat with the assistant. And so this one here, we'd create an assistant, we'd send it a message, and then it would bring back data. So I don't know, um, is this very useful to go through? No, not really. Um, like it's just basically an alternate to project knowledge base. I just don't wanna to get too much in the weeds here if this is not AWS related. Um, but anyway, we at least, made an account and we know how to work with it. Um, and so you saw this side of it. There's lots more to do here, um, which would be actually using embeddings. But for now, this is totally fine. And so we'll call this done and um, we'll go down, go over here and spin down our, mm, our Jupyter notebook. And when that's done, you can just go ahead and delete it. I'm not worried about this, I'll delete it later, but there you go.